Welcome to Drosh Studio. Today we are going to learn about Linear Perspective, a system that allows us to realistically draw a three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional surface. Let's get started. Linear Perspective mimics how our eyes see, and it works off the principle of convergence, where parallel lines that move away from us appear to converge or meet at a point. We can also say this in reverse. As lines come toward us, they appear to diverge or get farther apart. If we apply this to a box in space, our line systems will go to vanishing points on the horizon line. This is what gives the illusion of real space. Linear perspective is always based on a single viewer looking out at a scene. At the viewer's eye level is the horizon line, which separates the ground plane from the sky. If the viewer sits down, the horizon line will track with their viewpoint and lower, or rise when they stand. A point between the viewer's eyes is called the center of vision. This will become important later. The viewer is looking up at objects above the horizon line, and they are looking down on objects below the horizon line. The horizon line stays at the level of the eye. The viewer can look up or down, and the horizon line stays at the original eye level. The picture plane is the window that contains the image the viewer is seeing. It is essentially the borders of our page and floats in front of the viewer fixed at a right angle. The picture plane can be centered on the center of vision point or offset. It can be big or small. The horizon line can be high in the picture plane or it can be low in the picture plane or even outside of the picture plane. Even if it's outside of the picture plane, we still need to know where it is to draw correct linear perspective. Now that we understand the framework of what the viewer is seeing, let's create objects in linear perspective. Like the principle of convergent states, objects must have lines that converge to points on the horizon line. These points are called vanishing points, and we can have one, two, or three point perspective. An object will be in one point perspective when a flat side of the object is facing the viewer. So we can start by drawing a flat square or rectangle. Then, we pick a single point on the horizon line to converge our lines to. This will be our one point vanishing point. Next, we can take the corners of our box to the vanishing point. The lines that moved away from us are our Z line systems, and the front plane of the box is made up of X and Y line systems. Notice only one line system vanished to a point, which is why it is one point perspective. The X and Y lines will always be parallel or perpendicular to the horizon line in one point perspective. To complete our box, we need to decide where it ends by drawing another X and Y line to finish it off. The vanishing point in one point perspective is also the center of vision point of the viewer. Because of this, every single object we draw in one point perspective must vanish to this single vanishing point. Since it's based off of a single viewer, you can only ever have one one point vanishing point per image. An object appears in two point perspective when the viewer is looking at the edge of it. We start with a single vertical line that represents the edge of the object, and then draw lines from the top and bottom towards two vanishing points on the horizon line. Draw two more vertical lines to define the end of the box, and then take those corners to the vanishing points. Now you have a box in two point perspective. In two point perspective, the X and Z line systems vanish to a point and the Y lines remain perpendicular to the horizon line. We could even label the vanishing points, the Z vanishing point and the X vanishing point. If there is another box at the same angle to the first, it will go to the same set of vanishing points. Even if we have 50 boxes, all at the same angle to the viewer, they would all go to the same two vanishing points. However, if there is a third box that is at a different angle to the viewer, it would have to go to a different set of two point vanishing points. Unlike one point perspective, where you can only ever have one one point vanishing point per image, in two point perspective, you will have as many sets of two point vanishing points as you have objects angled differently to the viewer. When placing your vanishing points, be careful not to put them too close together. While there is nothing technically incorrect in this, the boxes will look distorted. Keep the vanishing points as far away from each other as you can to make sure the perspective seems more normal. There is a way to accurately find the distance between all of your vanishing points. However, we will cover that in a future lesson. You can also have one and two point boxes in the same picture plane, but the rule still applies. Every one point box goes to a single one point vanishing point. 
Three-point perspective happens when we tilt our head up or down towards an object. Since we have three points, all three line systems vanish. X and Z vanish at the horizon like in two-point perspective, but the Y lines will vanish at a special point above or below the horizon line. If your perspective drawings look weird, here's a checklist to compare your work to. In one-point perspective, Z lines will vanish to a point on the horizon line, X and Y line systems are parallel and perpendicular to the horizon line, and only one one-point vanishing point allowed per picture. In two-point perspective, X and Z line systems vanish to a point on the horizon line, Y line systems are perpendicular to the horizon line, and you need multiple vanishing point pairs for objects in different angles. In three-point perspective, X and Z line systems vanish to points on the horizon line, and Y line systems vanish above or below the horizon line. If you have broken any of these basic rules, your drawings will look incorrect. These are just the basics of perspective, and we will get much more technical and complex in future lessons. Perspective can be a challenge, but it is essentially a rule-based system. So follow the rules and your perspective drawings will be correct. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to go to drosh.com for more information on these topics and many more. If you want to see more videos like this, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.